listen, listen. We've started now, so we're on to the next lesson uh, series. Ooh. Now, um, before we jump straight into this lesson, because this one is is not very difficult. Um, just to have a look at something from the last lesson. So if we were to take um, the sequence, let's say, Fn equals Fn minus 1 plus Fn minus 2, and I tell you the first two terms are 1, what's this sequence uh, formula saying? It's saying the nth term is equal to What's n minus 1? Previous one plus the second previous one. Yeah. So if you start off with 1 and 1, what's the next one here? It'd be 2. Because you're saying the nth term is the previous one plus the one before that. What would be the next one? 3 and 5 and, and so on. Okay. But what's the disadvantage with this formula? I think you spotted it earlier. What's the disadvantage of having a formula like this? You have to calculate all the previous ones before you can get to the one you want. So if I said to you, what is F100? That's a problem, isn't it? Yeah. And the other problem is uh, our shortcut that we learned on the calculator doesn't work here. Why not? Like what's preventing us from using the calculator in the quick way that we learned? Two answers, isn't it? It's almost like you need an answer key and a previous answer key, which makes it difficult to use the calculator. Okay. But what is possible here for this one is you can actually get Fn into a formula of n. You know, you can actually write as some formula for n. It's possible. Now, I, it, it's a very difficult question, but I just want to give you a few minutes to, to try it. Even if you don't get it, it's good just to try it. And I'll give you a little hint to try and help you figure out what the formula might be. So just, just to be clear, let me write this again. We have f1 equals 1, and f2 equals 1, and then fn equals fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2. Okay? And my hint is to try um, now this isn't the answer but it's a hint to get you started fn equals uh, something like um, or some number, we don't know what it is, power n. Okay, now, this isn't the answer, but if you try this, see what happens. It might give you an idea of how you could fix the formula and get the answer. Okay, so just give this one a try for a couple of minutes. It is difficult, but it's good practice. See if you can figure out the formula here. Give it a try.
So the reason we're picking this as the formula to try is it looks quite promising to begin with. So what's um, power zero? It's one. And what's the first term? It's one. So, you know, it's kind of promising. And if R was one, what's one power one? one? But it doesn't quite make sense after that. Like, what do you do for the next one and so on? But uh, let's have a look at this one. We'll see what happens. Let's see if it works. Let's put it into the formula and see if it works. So if Fn is equal to R, what does this become? This is Rn equals, what's this guy? R power n minus 1 plus R power n minus 2. Now, we saw, uh, I think we saw this in a tutorial perhaps. We can kind of clean this up a little bit. We can say this is Rn and what can we change this into? R power n over R power 1. n minus 1. Yeah? And what would this one be? Squared. Okay, well what's in common here? On the top. Yeah, so I can cancel those guys out. Right, so I have 1 equals 1 over R plus 1 over R squared. That's not too bad. I'm actually getting pretty close to figuring out what the R might be in the formula, right? Uh, but what would I need to do to continue to try and figure out the R here? This isn't so easy to work with. What should I do to this? Times nearly R squared. And what would I do if I times it by R squared? What would I get? So then I get R squared minus R minus 1. Now don't bother checking. It, it um, has a solution but not factors. So you need to use the formula. So you get, if I was to use the formula here, R equals 1 plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So we have two answers here that maybe work. We could say something like... Um, fn equals 1 plus root 5 over 2 power n or maybe fn equals 1 minus root 5 over 2 power n uh, so let's check see what happens so let's try the first formula see if that works um, what do we get if we put in the first one if we put in 1 do we get the answer 1 plus root 5 over 2, power 1. What's that as a decimal? Can someone type that in, please? 1 plus root 5 over 2, power 1. 1.618. Okay, that's not great. What's the next one? Minus 0 0.618. Okay, and one more here. Come on, you all have calculators. And you all just had a break, so you should be full of energy. What's the next one here if I put in 2? 1 plus root 5 over 2 squared. What do you mean, wait a minute? How could this be going wrong? You have a calculator. Of course. What's the second one? Ah, come on. Come on, you have calculators. What's wrong with you people? What's the next one? Thank you. 2.618. Congratulations on pressing buttons in the right order. What's the next one, please? Cubed. 236. Okay, and let's do this one now. Uh, the first one with the 1, 1 minus root 5 over 2, power 1. It's negative 0.0. 618. Good. Roughly, yeah. Next one. Zero point three eight two. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. I guess I should believe you. Zero point three eight two. And the next one. 
Negative zero point two three six. Are we sure about this one and this one? Sake. <laughs> Do it myself. Right. One plus root five over two. Power one. First one correct. Second one correct. Okay, good. Third one correct. Good. And now the next three. First one correct. Second one, correct, good. Third one, correct. Okay, good, no, no. For some reason I just didn't believe the class, that's all. I don't know why. Okay, so if you look at this here, are either of these um, sequences going to, to work? Either of them going to work? No, because they're not, like, obviously, what did we need? We needed one, one, and what was the next one? It was one, one, two, wasn't it? Is this one it? No, no, no. This one here? Is this it? No, obviously not. This isn't one, this isn't one, this isn't one. But if you look at them, maybe you can put the two of them together to make the formula. So the last thing to try is maybe the formula Fn is going to be Something times 1 plus root 5 over 2 power n plus something else times 1 plus root 5 over 2. Oh, sorry, that's a minus, isn't it? 1 minus root 5 over 2 power n. Listen. So I tell you that, yes, this one does work. So by itself, this isn't the answer, and by itself, this isn't the answer. But you can combine these two answers together to get one that does work uh, perfectly. Any ideas on how we could figure out what the A and the B are? Any ideas on how we could figure out the A and the B? Any ideas? Well, if I put in N is 1, what should my answer be? What should I get for the first term if N is 1? I should get 1. I should get 1. Right? So if I put in 1, I get A times 1 plus root 5 over 2 plus B times 1 minus root 5 over 2. That should equal 1. Yeah? What should I get if I put this uh, N is 2? I should also get 1, shouldn't I? And then you can do the same thing. Now we won't do this now. But what type of problem do we have? Simultaneous, isn't it? And you could get the answer here. So I'm not going to do it. The only reason I did this long example was to show you that it is possible. It is possible to go from a recursive formula to a direct answer formula. However, the problem is, as you can see, this is very difficult to do. It's very difficult to do. Because first we have to figure out the or, and then we have to figure out, oh, neither answer works, but maybe both answers put together somehow could work. Okay, so it's not easy. It's not easy. Now, you don't have to worry about this on the exam, but <laughs> last year this was this, the example of what you might have in your coursework. So the coursework involves something which is more difficult to do uh, than what might be on the exam, but of course you have two weeks to work at it at home. So I'm only doing this to show you the level of difficulty on the coursework. It's something that is more difficult than the exam because it requires you know, a bit of work at home to try and figure it out. It's obviously not going to be this, but this just shows you the level of difficulty, yeah? The second part, the n equals to 2.612 plus 0 points, still give you 1. For which one? And the one on that one. This one here? Yeah. It will give you 1 if you add 2.618 plus 0.8. Which were you telling me to add? Um, the, the answer you go for R, the positive and negative. If you add it together, they will give you 1. 
if you add the ores together, they'll give you one? They won't give you one, but the second one, 2.6 million. Are you saying it's impossible to get one here? Yes. Even though I haven't put in the values of A and B, though? Yeah, but how do you get the values of A and B? Ah, oh, this is simultaneous. You have many methods. Elimination, substitution. Yeah, you can get A and B. Uh, it'll probably mean that B is negative. Yeah. Which means yeah. recording is it? Hmm? Which means of recording is it? 15. So you want to try this later? You want to get the A and the B later? I encourage you to. By the way, does anyone remember this, recognize this number, 1.618? Yeah, but we saw it earlier today, didn't we? Yeah. It was the first convergent example I did. The limit was 1.618. Yeah. And if you type this in on the calculator, you get 1.618. So maybe this was the exact answer from earlier. But we'll come back to that later, don't worry. I won't leave, I won't leave it like that. Mm -hmm. so can you solve the uh, yeah. <coughs> I, was, I invite you to try it at home. I, in fact, I encourage you to try it at home. All right. uh, okay, so <coughs> that was a little bit of um, a discussion on the level of difficulty for the coursework. So as you can see, the coursework isn't exactly easy, but you have two weeks to work on it, and most students actually get uh, an A on it because they're working on it for two weeks and they take their time and they check that the answer is right. You know, you can see me and you can check. So really, although it's hard, everybody practically gets an A because they put the work in to get the answer done. All right? It's not impossible, it just will take you some time. So that's positive, okay? Now, what we're having a look at next is this notation here. Does anybody know what this symbol means? Yeah, what does it mean? It means sum. Okay, and here's the structure. <coughs> Down the bottom here is where you start. So for example, maybe I say to start at four. And on the, the top here is where you finish. For example, maybe I say to uh, six. And then what goes in here? It's the formula. So this would mean one over four plus one over Five plus one over six. Can you see that? You're starting at four and you're finishing at six and you put those numbers into the formula. Here's another example. Maybe I start at zero and I go to five, n squared. So what would be first? Zero squared plus one squared plus two squared all the way until you get to five squared. Do you see what's happening here? Yeah. Uh, what about um, this one? What one would that be? One, two, three. One, two, three. Like that. Why do you mean that? The symbol means plus. Okay. This always means sum. Okay? Now, um, using your calculator, I want you to calculate, um, let's see, let's see, uh, we'll say one to five. 1 over n squared. So using your calculator, give me the decimal answer here. You'll have to write it out. Did you get an answer? What you get? Very good, 1.46 is it? Yeah. Now, for those of you who have this calculator, there is a feature on it that you can check the answer. Um, I don't know if you can see, but can you see this little sigma uh, symbol here, I think it is? Yeah. Um, if I press shift on this key, I can get it open. Yeah. You can type the formula in except they use the letter X instead of N, but no big deal. So where am I starting here? One and finishing at five. five and the formula is one over 
in this case, x. x squared, and I get the x by pressing alpha x here and hit the square button. So away we calculate and we get the answer. Now you can't, you can't do this in the exam. They want to see each term. However, you can check the answer in the exam. So you know that you got it right. But just to be clear, in the exam they would want to see each term at least once. So in the exam they want to see at least this. 1 plus, uh, what's it, 4, 9, is that right? 1, 2, 3, 16 and 25 and we got 1.46. But, uh, we can use the calculator here. So I want you, um, using the calculator if you like, I want you to calculate the following. I'll give you three versions of it. Uh, we'll say 1 to 10, 1 to 100, and you should be able to go up to 1,000. You can just do this one here. No calculator? Oh, we need to be buying our calculator now. Oh, it's processing. Are you doing the last one? Yeah. What's the first one? 1.5. 1. 5. The next one? Next one? Oh, it's still doing the second one. Is 100 too big for it? Is it crashing? 1.6. 1.635. Yeah? Is it still working on a thousand? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. No. At most ten, I think. The long way of one by one. No. In the exam, it's at most 10. Okay. Oh, do you have the next one? Good, okay. Uh, we'll do this again, but maybe not so big, okay? Um, let's say, um, we'll say 20, 60, and uh, 80. And we'll... Do one over n. So that's twenty, twenty, sixty, eighty. Three point three point six roughly. Okay, next one. You're ready. Okay, and then the next one here. This is up to eighty. Okay, okay and then the last one here. Um, Ten, twenty, thirty. Starting at zero, though. 1 over n factorial. Oh, well, I should put the 10 one up at the top. Yeah, 10, 20, 30. 10, 20, and 30. Okay. So 10, that's 2.72. 2.72, okay. Okay. So 
not really changing much, is it? Even though you're adding more terms. Yeah, well, it's practically the same if you round it off, isn't it? Now, in the first one, if you add the first 10 terms, you get 1.55. If you add the first 100 terms, you get 1.635. If you add the first 1,000 terms, you get 1.64. So, do you think it's possible to do this? What about if you add all the terms? You don't stop. You go 1 over 1 squared plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1, 1 over 4 squared plus 1 over 5 squared to infinity. Um, what do we think is happening here? Will it stay finite or will it diverge? Will it converge or diverge? What do we think? Look at what's happening here when we start adding. Yeah, so what is that then? Convergent or divergent? Yeah. This one is convergent. You can add all the terms together up to infinity and you'll get a finite answer. Okay. Uh, now, I think the last one's pretty easy. Um, convergent or divergent? It's convergent. In fact, it's converging extremely quickly. Even after 10 terms, we practically have the answer. Why is it converging so quickly? Because the denominator is getting so large. You know, 1 over n factorial is a very small number as the n gets bigger. So this one here is definitely uh, convergent. So it is possible to do this all the way up to infinity. Uh, but what about the middle one? What do we think? It's not as easy to see as the other two. What do we think? Slowly converging perhaps. In fact, the middle one is, believe it or not, uh, divergent. If you were to add all these terms from 1 to infinity of 1 over n, it, you will get infinity. It keeps, just keeps increasing, no limit. It keeps getting larger and larger. Okay. Now, um, can you calculate this on the calculator, please? Uh, guys, don't be silly. Tell me, can your calculator count up to infinity? I mean, I can wait a while, but, you know, not that long. So, does someone's calculator have an infinity button on it that can count to infinity? Am I, am I missing something? <laughs> no? <laughs> nobody's, nobody's calculator has infinity on it, right? No. Yeah, but it's not infinity though, 100 million. And in fact, I think even 100 million would probably crash the calculator. Because uh, it was struggling to deal with uh, 1,000. 1,000, right? Yeah. So, uh, we're going to need something a little bit more powerful than a calculator. Just a second. <laughs> right, okay. This one here, pi squared over 6. You can check it. Type in pi squared over 6 and you'll see that it's getting close to this. About 1.6 something, isn't it? Yeah, that's what it's converging to. And the last one, sorry, I just need to add up to infinity again. Just, yeah, okay. So uh, this one here will be e power 1. You can check this on your calculator as well. Yeah, you should have something like 2.71828, 1828. Four five nine zero four five. Oh, I'm sorry. Have I given more decimal places than the calculator? <laughs> I hate when I do that. I hate when I do that. Okay. So um, that's really it for this one here. Uh, you will see later, actually, how we can calculate what's called. These are all called limits. I don't know if that's a word anyone has seen before. Is it? The limit of the sequence or the limit of the series. Yeah. It comes up in calculus too, but it also comes up in um, sequence and series. Yeah. All right. If you like, you can use your calculator for this. Um, people were asking me, what if your calculator doesn't have this function? In the exam, that's okay because at most, the maximum I've ever seen in the exam, I think, was 
seven terms. Seven terms. So if you don't have this function on your calculator, you can just do it one by one for the seven terms. And I think as well, if we look at the worksheet, uh, what is the most I ask you to calculate on the worksheet? Let's see. Which one is nine? Yeah, but you don't start at one, you start at four. Eight terms is most, is it? Which one is that? Oh yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, let's see. Let me tell you which ones would be good to do. Guys, listen. Um, A C D Oh, I like one that has the minus on the outside. K X, Y, Z looks good. Okay. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, try those ones, um, and you can, you'll probably get them finished now, so there'll be no homework. So these ones, if you can get started on them. You can work together on this. Does your calculator have this function? Yeah, yeah good. Yeah, okay. Is here? No? No, oh, there you are. Umar? There you are. And Joshua, is that you at the back? Yep. Got that written down? A, C, D, K, X, Y, Z. Let's see what happens if I put in a million. 